Good evening, Foam Flingers. You're uh, here for the last and final episode of Foam After Dark. This is no April Fool's joke. Contrary to popular belief, and uh, it's a very, very somber, very uh, realistic episode. Uh, not a, in any ways any sort of clickbait. I don't, I don't know where you guys got that idea, but uh, let's go ahead and switch over now, and we'll, we'll just we'll just get into it. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, um, very real, very serious. Uh, it might be the last episode of Film After Dark because um, me and Blaster have been talking. We've had some creative differences as far as the direction of the show. So this actually might be our last episode. Yeah, I just can't stand this guy anymore. Yeah, we, we, we've we tried to make it work for, for the kids, but um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just not working. <laughs> <laughs> our staffing shortcomings uh just yeah. uh, i just can't work under these conditions anymore yeah we had uh we had three interns just quit um <laughs> <laughs> uh, no nah, in all seriousness guys um yeah this is just a little april fool's joke we wanted to <laughs> start with something like that something to kind of break the ice get everything <laughs> everything nice and going um yeah hopefully you guys have had a good week a good weekend uh, and hopefully we can make your Monday suck a little bit less. <laughs> All right. Hope you've at least had a little chuckle at our expense. Yeah. Uh, it's been a pretty interesting uh, Monday. Yeah. April Fools. Full of fools. Full of foolishness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, foolishness. I will say, in, in all honesty, I'm a, I am a little bit under the weather. I've been sick all weekend. Uh, I am feeling better, so that's why I'm I'm here doing the show. Uh, I kind of want that to be an I didn't want that to be the April Fool's joke that haha bots are sick. Ha 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 ha. I was like, no, for real, I I am kind of sick. Um, so if I mute the mic, it's gonna be like to cough or like take a sip of water or something. So I just wanted to let you guys know. Obviously, we do that. That's what it is. Don't panic. Don't freak out. Um, but we're we're all good to go in regards to that. Um, for the but, most part. Yeah, for the most part. <laughs> Aside from that, Blaster, how was your week? It was uh, pretty fantastic, I think, for the most part. Uh, awesome. Aside from having a, been a night out of town dealing with business garbage. But yeah, aside from that, all pretty good. Yeah, that that's right, General Strife. Bots is dying. Can confirm. 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would give that a 10 out of 10, but... Well, 10 out of 10 right. for his credibility. <laughs> okay. Um, But yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm just letting you guys know. So I might be a little low energy tonight, but I definitely wanted to get on the mics because uh, there's one thing I kind of pride myself on is the fact that we've never missed a show that was outside of our control. Like, we've never just canceled a show just because. Um, we've done it because like you know i've had no internet or there's been like a serious technical issue that we couldn't uh solve um or you were moving so yeah or like i was moving exactly available yeah uh but yeah but we've never canceled the show just because but anyways besides the point um the trucker icebox says technically we are all dying technically yes. uh, uh technically a very philosophical in, in, some, <laughs> in some, some way shape or form but like uh mm -hmm. was it the tim mcgraw song right live like you are dying yep so, kind of like an inverse not oxymoron or whatever i don't know how to say that oxymormon yeah <laughs> oxymormon oh, okay uh that's a little joke for me and my girlfriend but yeah oxymormons all right um yeah my weekend was kind of slow uh doing basically just laying in bed sick but aside from that we are here to put on a show for you guys make your monday suck less and uh yeah what do we got on our first little uh, chopping block last our first chopping block is uh it's our last episode so sad oh wait no so we sad. did that part already yeah, we did it already yeah. so sad uh we do have a mandatory maverick this week this was posted just a couple other couple other days ago a couple of other days, days ago. ago yeah that yeah, sounds like that English. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm on point with my English. Uh, so there's a custom, what he calls it? The custom revolver shotgun. And this is by Sawlog319. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we saw this on Reddit. 
and i love it because it has wood on it yep and it's a maverick and he said he did this for a friend who was doing a steampunk cosplay and something like you that, see yeah. on the follow-on shots uh i was still i want to preface this with he's still your hearts he does chop up a gear up maverick yep it is it a will maverick be okay it, it, it will be okay and uh the the world will the sun should still rise tomorrow and the birds will still sing and it will be okay probably but he did this for a friend who was doing a steampunk claws play party and he wanted to build something cool for his friend that was that, that a maverick just sweet. but not a maverick and of course mandatory there's a holster scabbard thingy for it yeah I, I just passed it i wanted to go back so this is the original uh real steel thing that it was kind of based on more or less and he did the best he could i came out fantastic yes it is a gear up maverick some people are probably um crying it happens i mean they're there either to be put on our shelves to enjoy or to um be used in be projects in yeah main be chopped up and made into stuff like yeah. I, and i think this was an excellent execution mm -hmm. of it and he saved himself a little bit of uh, extra priming on the revolver part because it's already black what i also and like is you. that uh, that's still functional because there's a little bit of a priming bar up here i don't go back a little bit oh you can't see it in that angle so right here he left that little bolt for the uh, bolt action priming uh which which is good because a lot of people when they do stuff like this they um they tend to they sacrifice yeah, yeah sacrifice the functionality for it and before anybody says anything because it is a black blaster um just remember different people play different ways and like blaster said this was for a cosplay uh, steampunk type thing so different rules different situations but we're just appreciating the integration as it is and if you wanted to you could take this whole same idea and just paint it funky nerf colors and have fun with it uh people are still gonna have fun with fun that way i just like the extra greebles that he put on it oh the yeah that the the grip was carved out of some spare pine block that he had laying around and just overall looks really cool oh yeah just excellent execution of a mandatory maverick Oh yeah. All right then. That was the our mandatory maverick of the week. Pretty cool. And uh, I'll try to link to all this below, like I always try to do. Sometimes I forget. You guys are free to remind me, but I'll try to always remember to link to it. <laughs> all right. So what do we got in some factory freshness? I think we got some unobtainium. That's yeah, apparently we do. on the we markets. Yeah, we do have uh, a little bit of that Chinese unobtainium that uh, we like to see thrown around that is on all these channels that they show like a 30 second or minute clip of it functioning and no purchase or buy links or yep. just general response at all. But this is pretty cool. I do uh, I do like the, the clap together of it. Uh, the restylizing slab and just which we did get confirmation from mr dorian this is a licensed version of the slab so it has been licensed so um i know there's some people they don't like to buy uh chinese knockoffs i say with their quotes uh because they're stolen designs and this has been licensed so if you do find a purchase link share it with us because i would uh, like to get my hands on this <laughs> But it is the, what is it called? It the dome nerve. The dome nerve. nerve. That's what they're calling yeah. it. D O M E yeah. nerve. And it's got the little mini mags. Oh, well, I mean the the mags are kind of like superfluous. You can put use any mag you want. That's talon or talon ish. But um... 
I don't know. I kind of like the battery cartridge looking aspect of it. To oh, it yeah. Extra, it gives it a nice like cyberpunk sci-fi that look. Space, yeah. yeah, that extra space laser look. And of course, optics, right? Yeah, but I, I doubt the optics come with it. <laughs> <laughs> that dead man's phone says, looks like Longboard Lord made that. Yeah, it certainly no. is. It certainly is highlighting his current colors for sure. Yeah. But that is the dome nerf. It's currently floating around. Uh, I think Tag said he saw a listing for this on Taobao, but when he went back, it was no longer there. So mm, take that as you will. Yeah. Or take it as inspiration to remodel your file, your copy of the files of the slab and oh, yeah. something similar to it. I just, I, I do really like the the re-imaging that they did on some of the, the parts and it looks really cool. Yeah, that's one thing with the, um, a lot of the designs that we have in the hobby is a lot of them look very, um, let me say this respectfully. They look very like, like bare bones samey because a lot of them are just proof of concept, um, form over function, I'm sorry, function over form. Um, and you know, what, once they kind of get that off the ground, they release the files into the wild and people can go nuts with it the way they want to <laughs> which yeah, is but then you get crazy things like mm -hmm. the tracer that mm -hmm. has that just i think that was the one that i said kind of looked like the darkwing duck but wasn't the darkwing duck. yeah like, <laughs> that was a whole just, that was a whole kind of gave me kind of gave me that vibe <laughs> right it doesn't look anything like the darkwing duck uh pistol but it just gave me that kind of vibe to it uh Oh yeah, but it looked cool. All right, um, let me see. Next, we have a another wooden ish blaster. This is this the, one's a little more wood. This a lot more wood. This is a wooden M4A1 by ooh, oh, I Parabellum. forgot the Parabellum. There we go. Parabellum. And I love the wooden pusher <laughs> being just a wooden dowel. Uh, the optics, which are, uh, you know, set on there very, very cleanly, like the Picatinny, just like, I mean, you can tell it's Picatinny <laughs> right yeah, on the wood. Just put a Picatinny block, screw it right down there mm -hmm. and just make it go. I and, really like his stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, he does for those of you that aren't familiar with Parabellum's work. He does a lot of these plywood based blasters and just with very interesting designs and this kind of clapboard together uh, stylized things. The, the thing I do like about it is when you look at things, some of the things. So when you're kind of looking at it from five feet away, it looks very kind of blockish or whatever. But when you actually look at it, the there's details where it really matters. Mm -hmm. uh, prime example is this one. When you look at the pistol grip, I mean, when you look at the grip area, that's actually made for a human hand. The trigger is properly formed and, mm -hmm. and edge relieved. And just those types of details of putting the, putting the uh, form and function where it really matters is, is really nice. And it's consistent across this work. Oh yeah. He's done a number of other projects for the community as well. I don't want necessarily for the community, but he's sh showcased them to the community. I don't have any on hand, but I, I know that he's done some really awesome work. Yeah, he posts his... Oh my goodness. I am on a roll today. He's on a roll. <laughs> he, hey, Backyard he Phone, thanks for joining <laughs> us, my dude. He posts them on Instagram. So if you check out Oh, I didn't know he had an Instagram. I've only ever seen his stuff on, on Reddit. I've only... I follow his stuff on Instagram. But I, I don't know how I can say that. Because I haven't been on Instagram in like <laughs> three weeks or something, I don't think. Yeah, if you reached out on me on Instagram, I apologize. I shall go and check it later today so that you will not feel neglected any farther. Once again, this is why this is the final episode of Home After Dark. Because we just can't work together. <laughs> 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 hey primate thanks uh, for joining us man uh but yeah this is a beautiful wooden piece uh and 
I think I said this last episode, but I'll, I'll reiterate it now. Um, I'm glad to see wood coming back as a platform for blaster construction. Uh, there was a time before 3D printing like oversaturated the hobby space where we would have people making like wooden stocks and wooden blaster components uh, for blasters. And it, it was an interesting take on it. And uh, I'm kind of glad to see that coming back into the hobby space. But uh, yeah. I do like it. And of course, this is the M41A from Aliens. Aliens. Yeah. Really? Okay, well, speaking of Instagram, we have a couple of uh, new, uh, well, Instagram pieces from Sandshark Labs. And this is the, which... I don't know. I don't know what what he's what he calls this. I kind of skimmed it for. I gotta flip back. Oh, the final condition. Hey, dead man's phone. There he is. Yeah, let's give that guy some love. <laughs> but yeah, this is very uh, cyberpunk inspired, and what I like about it the most, aside from you know it looking like it was just taken straight out of cyberpunk, is the fact that it has these cartridges or casings, depending on what you prefer that uh, hold three half darts each so i'm actually really curious how this fires i was not able to find any firing footage and i want to know if anybody has any and of course uh, he go ahead bless it's a flywheeler yeah but i still want to know the, the, the fire on there yeah yeah but i still want to know how it how it handles you know firing three at once i mean oh yeah like of course but this does look like it's something out of the uh cyberpunk 2020 Mm -hmm. original rpg you know manual book oh wait whatever. never mind he, he does have some firing footage my mistake Where? uh i just because he had posted another link oh i missed this link before you're watching this live with yes pure reaction video with bots and blaster See, the only bad thing is this, is this is Instagram, so I can't grab the video off of it and kind of like showcase it easier. Because, okay, Instagram, I have to download like, and kind of like rip the um, the videos off to showcase them properly. Oh, and when you prime it, it ejects the shells. I love that. Proper shotgunning people, proper shotgunning. Look at that. Oh my god. Okay, I did not know there was firing footage. So I, I want this even more. Look at that. Is that flywheel? It looks like no, it. I'm not sure. It has to be. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a... I think I'm seeing a rep trigger. Yeah, okay. I am relieved. Either way, it look it looks fantastic. I mean, it is. Yeah, yeah, you can see the wire in here. This is probably an earlier build before he released, um, or before he cleaned it up completely, because you can still see some wires off the top. Yeah, it's unnecessary, but I love it. You are correct, Ed Man's phone. It is. Oh wait, I said I, unnecessary. I said it was it was a, a three a three dart cartridge. No, it's a, it's a six dart. It's a six half dart cartridge. So that's 12 darts total per, per shot. I thought it was two three dart cartridges. No, it's two six dart cartridges. I have the photo up right now. Okay. Fancy. Very Extra fancy. fancy. Yeah, that's... I'm, I'm impressed more so. And I was impressed before, so... Wow. Jolly good show. Jolly good. Extra extra proper shotgunning. Mm hmm For when you really got to hit the point. <laughs> yeah. When you really need area denial. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me Everything see. in this area, in this cube, <laughs> return to spawn. Now. Return to spawn. Now. Away with ye. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let me see. Next, um, you want to talk about the, uh, the Carney Rex thing? With Carney Rex thing. Oh yes, yes. Okay. I love Carney Rex. All right. So, um, just for total transparency, 
my buddy Walcott recently did a video about the uh, Nerf musket, as he's been calling it. And it's a fantastic little piece of hardware, piece of tech. And uh, I won't show off the whole video, but I will jump ahead to one part up here where we're croning it. And we are, uh, he jammed it. It is getting about 150 FPS, so 150 plus, uh, and it does fire multiple different types of ammo. So that is great. I know that I personally love playing Civil War games, if you know what those are. Uh, I don't know if they're generally pretty well loved for like warm up rounds or icebreaker rounds. Uh, and something that hits 150 is just like pretty sweet. It's right in that range where you want it to be. But um, of course, this particular um, blaster, its original parts are made by a gentleman. Uh, I assume a gentleman, I apologize for assuming, by the name of Carney Rex. And they have the files available for 1247. Uh, and they've made a bunch of other great things in the hobby. I love his work. Yeah. I think a while I, back. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm disappointed that he doesn't sell the STLs for the Coke can assemblages. Like the little, the little British and <laughs> her Hessian hats with the little 3D printed musket that you stick onto the Coke can before you shoot all the red coats. I'm just seeing if they're in this firing assembly. <laughs> yeah, Primate says that the jamming issue seems like a fatal flaw though. Yeah, and that's entirely true. You just have to um, like be aware of it, like, you know, know your order of operations. It's, it's definitely more of a gimmick blaster than a um, performance blaster. But the fact that and, it's... And <laughs> Go ahead, Buster. Well, I was just saying that the jamming issue isn't really an issue. It's operator error. Yeah, that's true. And I love seeing those cans flying every shot. I just, uh, I giggle on the inside like a little child. <laughs> but yeah, he also had does have, of course, like the Napoleonic uh, Nerf cannon, which I think was the first thing he's put out. It was either the, the, I'm pretty sure it was the Napoleonic cannon that he released first, and then the naval cannon that he calls pirate cannon. And those were the, I can't 100% remember which one was first. I'm mostly certain the Napoleonic one was. <laughs> and then, and then that one. And then, of course, all the, the muskets and arquebuses and arbalests and <laughs> not arbalests. That's, that's a big giant crossbow. But the and the wheel lock, I like how he includes the different types of you know classical lock mechanisms. Of I think there's a match lock and I think there's a wheel lock and just just the silliness of it. It's just absolutely phenomenal. Primate said on YouTube, I could see someone pushing the ramrod too far in the heat of the moment. Uh, really easy. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with you. Like, I'm not, like, disagreeing with you by any stretch of the imagination. But once again, that would be user error, not blaster error. Now, I will say there's probably ways that that can be addressed and fixed. But I, I, I would say for initial proof of concept, it works. And if you want to go with the, like, whole, like, blunderbuss style of blaster, which is essentially what a real blunderbuss was, is... You know, you loaded your black powder, you packed it, you primed it, you shoved whatever you could in there, and you, you packed it away, and you just, you took your shot. Um, and I think this is the closest we can get to uh, to recreating that. <laughs> Was it a seven barrel one that shoots, that can shoot both rival and darts? Uh, but you have to prime every single barrel. It's like <laughs> I, think, I, I think it's this one, the folly musket. I think it's this one. Yeah, it's just it, it's so ridiculous and great at the same time. Let's see if I can get that bigger for us. There we go. Yeah, see, <laughs> you have to prime each one. I love the fact that he's in costume for this. <laughs> the gentleman in me is very pleased. Yeah. And I just love that the coat cans go flying. The red coats. Mm -hmm. 
the washers that make you giggle slash smile or you can't stop blasting are the best ones you're right dead man so it just you know uh, you might be irritated with the amount of time to load versus firing but it's it pays off when everything just goes catastrophically everywhere once you pull the trigger and whatever you're pointing it at just flies around the room but this is also some of that's the ammo some of that's the target <laughs> right <laughs> but it's also true a lot of this is very like situational for people that are either going for a specific type of play uh like like play area or play type or they're going for a specific type of setting for example like if they're in the larp or historical recreation type of thing and they want something maybe a little safer or you just want to get together with your friends and everybody oh, yeah. 3d print the brown bass and or there i go again oh my goodness <laughs> anyways anybody wants to 3d print them you know a bunch of friends get together and 3d print some muskets and then goes to the park and but you can get those t-shirts that are that look like the the colonial <laughs> you uniforms. could yeah you could uh just just smiles for hours at this kind of with this kind of stuff yeah uh and yeah once again this is carney rex on etsy um go check them out if you have the cash and the 3d printer because i think with the exception of a few places like frontline foam there's not a lot of places that feature their work uh available i don't know oh really i i don't yeah. know i mean hey chat you're free to correct me but i've only seen their stuff like print on demand so to speak on uh frontline foam i don't know if it's been available on uh like out of darts or anywhere i have never seen it there oh <laughs> dead man's, dead man's phone yeah. Says, yeah go ahead, <laughs> go ahead man the, the bragging rights of tagging the griffin guy with a musket across the way yeah absolutely and that's exactly why you would run a blaster like this absolutely yeah in, in, in one of those t-shirts or if you can if you can get it from a costume shop right <laughs> like the uh the the traditional colonial at least a tricorn hat you can manage oh, one I of would. those i mean i still need to get one of those i used to have a tricorner hat um like years ago i don't know where it happened off to but i would love to find well, if that. you can if you can find the right pirate hat during halloween time mm -hmm. one of the ones where they actually take the the wide brim and fold it up front and back and make it look like a pirate if you can find one of those during halloween time that's just stitched up like that with the skull and crossbones you pull the skull and crossbones undo those stitches and reform it into a tricorn hat so that's an idea never thought about that but you got to find the right one if they're if they're molded that way then you know it's no you know it's a no-go but if you find the ones where it's just a wide brimmed hat that they reshaped you can unstitch it and re reshape it reshape it yep well, yeah, that, that's, that's a great idea cereal boxes. there you go oh i never thought about yeah, that cereal boxes the yeah, most i had ever done fun. yeah something like that is i had made a cowboy hat out of beer boxes but that's uh not quite the same thing well i did the uh, uh what was it the the naval officer's hat out of the the newsprint oh really back when you could get back when you could get newsprint right and make things out of it back when that was a viable crafting supply yep or even available crafting supply it's true all right uh we got a couple of events coming up i mean same events we've been plugging but we're gonna keep plugging them until it's time because oh, they're keep coming oh yeah so the first event is Maryland Mayhem taking place in Maryland in the uh, Rochester Institute, I think. No. Oh, no, no, that's no. wrong. No, no, no that's no. wrong. Yep, it's, I, it's wrong. DC. 
University, University of Sorry, my, my mistake. Yeah. And it will be April 19th through the 21st. And once again, there's going to be a foam tournament. Um, the first day on Friday, there will be a small little vendor con. So if you're a sponsor and you have purchased a, uh, a sponsorship table, you're essentially going to have uh, open open gym, so to speak. Uh, and then the 20th is going to be HVZ, and of course the 21st is going to be the 11th hour blaster battle, which is, I think, their competitive stuff. No, I'm sorry, their competitive stuff was Monday. My, my brain's all over the place. 11th hour blaster battle and uh, blaster con, which is going to be the kind of like more like the pickup style games. Unless I'm mistaken, but yeah, registration is still open. It is coming up. It is rapidly approaching. If you were planning to go uh hopefully you guys will go hopefully you guys will have a blast hopefully you'll tell me all about it because uh looks like i will not be going this this time uh, i really wanted to but things just weren't lining up <laughs> for me at least and of course merch if you want to buy yourself some merch go for it and of course once again some of the sponsors and vendors are going to have some familiar names in the hobby, 3D Printed Solid, uh, Out of Dire, Start Zone, uh, World Foam Alliance, of course, Saber will be there, and Xbox or Xbox Games and Survival Fest 2024, which is another event I think that's coming up soon, but I, I've tried to reach out to the people. Uh, I've talked to one person about it, but it, was, uh, it wasn't about us promoting them, it was about them wanting to use something i had been working on and i was like sure uh but that's neither here nor there um yeah so some of the sponsors and of course the vendors uh about the same thing <laughs> silly butts moose will be there etc all the good people yep yep and then let me see our next event is merge masters uh blast you want to talk about merge masters Mr. Nathan's Merge Masters. It's a big integration competition going on on Mr. Nathan's Merge Masters Discord. And you can check out entry and rules on his YouTube channel, Mr. Nathan. And it's an open Discord. So even if you're not part of the Merge Masters competition, you can join the Discord there and see what people are working on and ask questions and get feedback. And even throw your own hat in the ring. Even if you're not going to do the competition, show your integrations, show your builds, that kind of stuff there. It's a great place to get feedback and input from incredibly talented, competent, capable fellow artists mm -hmm. like that place. And I will also say this is not the updated uh, Excel document. I'm just using the one that uh, Mr. Nathan had uh, provided me. Uh, the more up-to-date one is still on the Discord. And I'm pretty sure, I think they're going to do another live stream coming up shortly. They do one, it's I think, been once. A week or two. Yeah. They're, they're going to have one coming up soon where they'll probably have all the stuff updated. But just and to that's a good thing to watch. Check mm -hmm. out his updates. Uh, if you follow Mr. Nathan's YouTube channel, and he's been giving updates every two to three weeks, uh, showing progress on people's builds, showing people who have enter entered and looking at what they've done, how they've done cuts, how they've done these integrations, and really just seeing things uh, together with a bunch of like-minded people. Yep. I really like this mod that here. Competition, that competition goes until a April 30th. Yeah. So it's not too late. You can join. Get to Kraken. And there's different if if you're if you're reserved about it, there are different uh brackets. And there's ones for if you're only integrating three blasters, there's ones if you're integrating three to five, and mm -hmm. then there's one for integrating far more than that yeah i was gonna say I, i've been really enjoying watching vile mods uh do his integration work on twitch uh and his choice of blasters was very interesting to me but i mean once i started seeing them 
you know, kind of be put together for lack of a better word. I was like, yeah, I get what he's going for. It's coming together pretty sweet. So. I, I like that one too, because uh, just the sheer number of rebel blasters that are going into it. And yeah. I've always just really enjoyed the rebel blaster lines. They also the, clean up very well. The shells. Yeah. Well, the shells just amazingly well designed. Uh, somebody had said that they think that the designers slash engineers uh, from Dark Tag, when they killed the Dark Tag line, were mm -hmm. the designers for Re the Rebel line. Which I was like, that makes well, sense. that makes sense, yeah. right? That, that when you look at the lines, that tracks. No, this is Iron Gopher. That's uh, Mr. Nathan, Mr. Nathan's Merge Masters. Yeah. Submit. No, make. Don't submit. Make your submission. That's what I mean. Like build. Submit. Subscribe to submit. my universe, as <laughs> Al the Geek would say. Subscribe to my universe. <laughs> if you were there, submit you know. Submit to your desire. Submit to your desire to make a submission mm -hmm. and build something cool with fellow like-minded artists. Yep, yep. All right, next up, we have another um, another event to plug, and that is by Mr. Foam Battalion, which is Foam and Fortune. We've plugged this, and we'll continue to plug it every week. I'm sorry, yeah, every week until uh, his event comes, and that is on May 25th, 2024. And he's just trying to start something up in Palmdale, California. So if you're down in that area or can get down into that area conveniently, go give uh, some some love and support to uh, a community that's trying to get established down there. And that is May 25th. Mm -hmm. and that is Mr. Sweet Bread Shake, the sweetest of breads. So, <laughs> What was the location again? I know it's Palmdale, but what was there was a park. Right? Um, um, Manzanita Heights Park. Heights park. Yeah. yeah, Manzanita Heights Park. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know if you definitely want to go uh, check them out, a new uh, Nerf club that's starting in the area and having their first public war, go for it. General Strife on Twitch said that he hopes that next year he'll be able to participate in Merge Master. Yeah, why not, man? I mean, I, I know that this year, um, I think I wasn't the only one that moved. I think General Strife also moved, or he is, was in the process of moving. I don't know if that's situated and resolved itself, but I know he wanted to uh, participate as well, but it just happens. In the meantime, keep practicing. But he is act Mr. Nathan's actually said he's going to have another competition mm -hmm. shortly after this one closes, that it's going to be... A continuous thing not a once a year thing and that he'll have he's contemplating having themes so Ooh, such cool. as build a sniper blaster or build uh, an accessory or something like he was tossing a bunch of ideas around like that of sometimes to inspire people to step out of their comfort zone and to build something that they perhaps normally wouldn't build or to take a new perspective on something so that is that is something he mentioned so look forward to that uh yep, yep. there let me see we we have one more event to plug almost forgot about it but here it is the uh, fan expo in dallas yeah is june 7th through 9th mm -hmm. uh, i believe al the geek said he was going to be there yeah and i believe there may be other uh, creative People, people from the world foam alliance are going there. to be yeah. there yeah and it is it is a cosplay comic sci-fi pop culture fan convention mm -hmm. and if that's your thing uh there's gonna be a bunch of people there that you should have a good time with yeah and they also said they would be there uh repping uh dart zone so if you want to go and see what dart zone's up to and uh you know, hang out with some people or at least say hi to some people that you know from the World Foam Alliance as well as Foam After Dark and other places. Uh, yeah, why not? 
Uh, let me see. How much are the tickets? So close, and I will not be able to make that. I have a prior commitment that week, and it's all week. I mm -hmm. will not be able to make that, unfortunately. I was very disappointed when I realized that, there was that was the same weekend. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, happens, Dang it. <laughs> so single day passes, guys, just for uh, transparency. If you buy your tickets now, if you are going $30, full price is $35. If you're going for all three days, $94. Uh, advanced price, full price of $110. And if you get the ultimate fan package for some reason, I never understood the point of getting those personally, but, you know, tomato, tomato. Uh, the advanced price is $134, and the full price is $150. And, you know, if you're under the age of 18 or a child, it's significantly cheaper. But um, besides the point, wanted to put that out there because uh, our friends in the Little Foam Alliance, as well as Dart Zone, uh, will be there. So, yeah, go check it out. And you, and you have to be an actual child, not just mm -hmm. act like one. Right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so... I think we got a topic that we we're kind of pushing around and you seemed really passionate about it. So I was like, cool, let's, let's save that for the mics and, uh, okay. Blaster. What do we got? Uh, so our big topic for today is blasters and where they work on the field. And you kind of have rear field blasters, you have midfield blasters and you have frontline blasters and my take on it is a rear field blaster is high powered long range it can have a slower rate of fire if it has that consistency and accuracy to it of course accuracy is kind of the mm -hmm. the hard goal in this hobby just because of the nature of the armaments and the nature you know, of the ammo kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah the nature of the ammunition for sure but uh so that's a rear field blaster and like i said that's a bigly run you can afford a slower rate of fire because you're working from the back you have longer ranges you have a little more time for reaction mm -hmm. such like that now a midfield blaster is something that well, well hold have... on, but, but before we move to midfield like what are some examples uh what if someone were to ask well give me an example of like a like a rear field blaster what, what would you tell them uh i would say something bolt action for sure so that would be anything like spring indra. For? <laughs> yeah, yeah the the indra the the u variant the because the u variant's a bolt action right yeah I think so, yeah. And, to and, my knowledge, at least. And just the very high power, very slow rate of fire. Think, you know, Nerf sniper stuff. Now, a Calivern is certainly a, a rear field. I tend to think of a Calivern as a rear field slash midfield blaster because. That's actually what something... I was thinking of when you were saying rear field <laughs> but go ahead well because if if you're running a super long barreled mm -hmm. a caliber then yeah it would be more of a rear field blaster but if you're running you know more of a 16 to 14 inch barrel caliber then that's something that i would consider rear field to midfield if you're running a 20 inch barrel once you're getting about that long it's gets a little difficult to manage in the midfield because one of the things about a midfield is it does need to be maneuverable because if you're in the midfield you're maneuvering to create control points uh, and you have to be able to hold a a line of sight you have to be able to hold a lane you have to be able to hold a zone however you're playing whether it's lanes or zones or or lines it, it you know how you play is how you play but generally that's how that's one of the priorities of running midfield is you're running control uh in but a little more dynamically because you have to be able to move move and maneuver now if you're running rear field your field control mm -hmm. so you're applying pressure 
at all the points and you don't need to move so much maybe you might move left side to right side but for the most part if you're rear field you're kind of center rear and applying your leverage across the field and that's why you can use a slower rate of fire much higher powered blaster versus the midfield where you're running something that can be as high powered but you need per per perhaps something with a slightly higher rate of fire in that so primarily something pump action if you're running a springer i think pump action springers do really good midfield mm -hmm. they allow you to apply a sustained rate of fire when you know how to use one effectively and allow you to control lanes and zones and still so would, be um, movable so so would you consider a more top of the line flywheeler like a like a griffin or a protean or even a, like a strife x would you consider that more mid 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 midfield would you consider that more like front field right so a that would be midfield to front line okay and the reason the reasoning behind that is it's midfield when you're using it as sector control and it's front line when you're using it as a pressure as a pressure device and that you're trying to use it to completely push forward and overwhelm your opponents and that's primarily where flywheelers perform the best when you have something that's semi-auto or full auto that you can maintain a very high rate of fire that plus that six plus rounds per second mm -hmm. is really beneficial when you're at the front line and that's so that you can a repel a hard push or b create a hard push and then you're backed up by your midfielders which are going to have a sustained rate of fire pump action springer or a semi-auto a little bit better tuned uh, flywheeler and the reason why i say a a flywheeler on the midfield is perfectly usable and why semi-auto is because with that slower rate of fire from a semi-auto you're still able to get that three to five rounds per second but with each trigger pull it gives the wheels a chance to rev back up and come to full speed so you're getting a little bit more of that consistency from shot to shot with a slight fall off in rate of fire now there are some perhaps some counters to that when you're using something uh, perhaps like a highly tuned fdl where it doesn't have a a large amount of fall off from first to well it has a lot of fall off from first to fifth but by the time you've got your second or third dart in there it's pretty much come to a you're, you're seeing a lot of drop off <laughs> Yeah, well, you're seeing a, a lot of drop off from the first two to three rounds, but after that, it actually just holds that mm -hmm. like it doesn't fall off any further than that, even though you're running six or eight rounds per second and you just got the trigger down. Mm -hmm. There's like this point of harmony that it comes into uh, kind of like an equilibration point where it's rate of fire, the torque of the motors can maintain that rate of fire or rate maintain that fps regardless of the rate of fire and you can feed all you want to in it at that point in time or at that feed rate and you're not getting any more fall off and that's, no, that's one of the advantages of some of those you know, yeah. high torque motors the yeah. high torque high rpm motors is mm -hmm. you might have first to third round fall off but once you're at your third round it's just sustainable at that point in time yeah that, that, that's what i was gonna say I, I think that's why when it comes to at least flywheel blasters um having the uh, the burst fire or at least uh, three round burst select fire uh options is so appealing because usually after <sighs> controversial hot take i know but uh usually 
after three bursts from a uh, flywheeler, uh, you're going to see that fall off pretty noticeably. So in order to keep that, I'll say high momentum for lack of a better word, um, usually two to three uh, select fires is, is where it's at. At least from my experiences. Oh, oh absolutely. Like three mm -hmm. rounds, three rounds to five round bursts are pretty ideal, mm -hmm. especially in this hobby, especially when you're on a competitive limited ammo field. So if part of the competitive gameplay is ammo capacity and your that becomes a resource management point for you and that becomes very detrimental when you have just straight up full auto and you mag dump on somebody your first the whatever it is your first round or whatever yeah. and then you you turn around and you've only got well you say you've got three or four mags and you mag dump on somebody in the first part of the first round and now you're kind of stuck now you're out right? of ammo yeah. <laughs> now, now you're running now you're running the risk of not being able to make the long game and you know be wind up two rounds in or whatever and you're out of ammo Okay, so so let me ask you this in regards to like frontline uh, frontline fielding, would that exclusively be the domain of the flywheeler, or is there alternatives that can like, in your mind or from your experience, like fit in that category? If you can run, if you can maintain, how to say, it, if you have a pump action Springer that you can maintain two to three rounds per second, that you can cycle it very quickly and very effectively, then it can be a frontline blaster. So with that in mind, something like a Talonclaw, something like a Lynx, those are very good midfield to frontline blasters because you can hold a line effectively if you can keep your opponents suppressed. And it does not take as much to keep somebody suppressed as people like to make out especially in this hobby where you have time of flight of darts yeah where you have you know moments of time countable moments of time between pulling the trigger and getting the the dart to wherever it is that you're aiming at right and so yeah there is it, it's not the it's not entirely the, the domain of flywheelers but they do have a rate of fire advantage for sure. But you can counter that with a Springer that you can cycle quick enough and and trade that rate of fire out for accuracy and the ability to, you know, control a line or control a zone. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I was gonna say back back in back in the old HVZ days when I used to play hvz a lot locally um i didn't have access to a uh to a flywheeler so i just would uh <laughs> i just would like um uh, slam fire a bunch of rounds with with my rampage because yeah i'm, I'm that old <laughs> i'm running a rampage on hvz and uh yeah it was pretty effective i mean keep in mind hvz it's a lot different of a um, play style than competitive uh foam playing but you know well, I think even something like a slab or oh yeah, slab could work or, yeah, or a spring thunder if you can get one to function reliably enough. Okay. <laughs> well, I love them. Like they're amazing. The the spring thunder is an amazing piece of kit. It's just it's an amazing piece of kit because of its mechanics, and it's kind of its mechanics that make it difficult. Because when something goes wrong, mm -hmm. it's it's a little tedious to get fixed. I get you, yeah. But it's an amazing piece of kit. Like it's just, it really is. It, the Spring Thunder is an awesome blaster. Well, I've always been of the mindset that every blaster has its uh, its its kinks and its quirks and its oddities to them. And once once you figure it out and get comfortable with it, I mean. 
that's part of the reason why people have like training days and stuff i mean that's also why i am a big uh promoter of like go outside on a day that's not a normal nerf war day and uh, fling some foam at some targets this way you get comfortable with how your blaster operates the amount oh, the amount of people that i've had in in local groups that buy a blaster they use it only for nerf war and they put it in the closet for the rest of the week or the rest of the month rather and Where they uh, thrown a bag or yes uh, exactly shoes and stuff on it and then wonder why their scope or their sights are off know, all really. yeah. yeah it was it was shooting perfect last week oh well, yeah <laughs> till you threw your backpack on it and now it's all not straight anymore go figure yeah it, it's even worse when um we we had a guy in the group recently uh get into lipos which there's nothing wrong with lipos i mean like everything in the hobby do your research on it right um and he left his 2s no, no it was 3s in his uh in his blaster over the month and he took it out to game ran it and then his lipo alarm started going off and he had to figure out what was going on with it and i had to tell him like well did you charge it properly did you let the voltage get too low and he goes is that bad and i'm like it's kind of bad <laughs> well, I, it's it can cause you problems yeah um, that's why i was like it, it's kind of bad yeah <laughs> it, it's certainly not convenient right now when it's not running at top level right mm -hmm. like you know you know you charge it and then you, know, you charge this day before then you run it and when you get back home at that day you know throw it on a storage charge if you're not gonna yep you know if you if you only have a once a month war then it's it pretty advisable to throw it throw it back on your charger and put a storage charge on it yep. just because you're not gonna you're not gonna run it for another 30 days now you know for some people that's kind of tedious or whatever but that's kind of do you want to buy a new battery every six months or <laughs> yeah that's what i was gonna say yeah <laughs> I, i'll be 100 percent honest i buy the cheap batteries i do i buy the the i have a whole bunch of no name batteries and people ask me well, well why well, is this a good battery and i'm like it's a good price and that's why i bought it and i just take works. care of my batteries and then i don't have problems because even with the cheap junk batteries if you take care of them so you charge them beforehand and at the end of the when you get home at the end of the day you throw them on the charger and put them on a storage charge then when you go next month because you know you're not using it for whatever reason you're not practicing or say you do want to practice i will tell you this throwing it on a storage charge is not that big of a deal yeah because while it is a slightly lower voltage you can still use it for a training session if if you're just going to go for 15 20 minutes in your backyard shooting at targets and shooting and moving it, it will be fine to use your flywheeler on a storage charge and it will be good and then the next war in a week or two you throw it back on the charger to put it on a full charge and then it will run perfectly fine for your war and then when you're done with your war put it on a storage charge now if you are going to have a serious practice session and you are coming from a storage charge you're coming from a storage charge it's not going to take that mu that long to go to a full charge maybe 30 to 45 minutes mm -hmm. so if you think about it first of like oh hey i want to run out in the backyard and do some drills well just the first thing you do is throw your lipo on the charger and then get all the rest of your gear ready yeah and if and if you think of it in that order then you'll be fine all too often i think the the problem is that you get all your gear ready and then you're like oh i didn't charge my lipo well now i gotta wait another 30 45 minutes well now i don't feel like practicing yeah so if you throw if you just keep it in mind to to throw it on the charger it depending on the charger depending on the lipo it might take 15 or 20 minutes tops uh to come from a storage charge to a full charge <laughs> And, and even then, I mean, I'll, I'll say a hot take, which is you don't need a complete full charge. You need, just need it to be above that. Um, I think it's like 3.4, 3.2. Yeah. 
Yeah, as long as it's above depends that. Depends on who you ask. Yeah, that's why I said it, it depends who you ask. <laughs> it depends um, on who you ask. But as long as it's above that, and if you're just going to do like a real quick little like target drill session, or maybe you're just doing some outdoor like target plinking at some targets that you have, uh, yeah, that'll be fine. I mean, the, the key that I always tell people is keep it above the three. As long as it's above the three, you're going to be golden. As, as long as you keep it up 3.2 you'll be yeah. uh three three starts getting in kind of a danger zone for some of the cheaper batteries because of the chemistry but uh, the 3.2 even with the cheap dodgy batteries they're still they're still recoverable mm -hmm. um, you just throw a balanced charge on them and get them back up to snuff and it'll all be hunky-dory but uh, I'll say regardless of, of if you choose to engage with lipos or not, there's nothing to be scared of. Just educate yourself properly. Um, they're, they are what they are. They're part of the hobby now. Um, what's your experience? Have you used the uh, Lions at all? I, I've, I've seen a, a trend, uh, not in my local group, but in another local group. They've been using more Lions because at least down here where we live, it's a, lot, it's a bit hotter. And they're claiming they get just as good performance. I don't know. I've used only Lions for like the cheap like knockoff blasters, not for anything serious. <laughs> uh, they get they get equal performance because mm -hmm. it's the same voltage. They the current is highly dependable on your battery source, from what I've been able to tell. But for the most part, unless you're running oh unless you're running dual stage super high torque super high rpm so like krakens or the, like thirty six thousand rpm mm -hmm. uh, high torque like what are they like 10 amp stall or something like that at thirty thousand rpm thirty six thousand rpm uh type motors or the seventy five thousand rpm uh, slot car style motors that what are they the the lokis or the merlins mm -hmm. or the raidens uh, and even if you're running those in single stage mm -hmm. from what i've come across uh, li lions will be adequate but if you're running dual stages i think some of the current capacity for lithium ions really isn't there and that's where high C rated lipos really help out when you're getting up into the, especially the dual stage, high torque, high RPM motors. Then you're running, ideally you'll run like a 90 to a hundred or even 120 C rated lipo, which is a very high current draw. And that's just to keep the motor spinning, to give them so you're not gonna crunch. <laughs> to give them crunch well it's to to feed them all that they're going to eat for lack of a better description right so yeah. the the current capacity of the battery the battery can't give it any more current than the battery can give it right but the motors can take all the current that they want i guess and so if you have a higher current battery then if you have a higher current motor you will get the full capability out of that motor and current is torque that's uh, that's kind of what it comes down to it's also heat so there's the counterpoint to it no i get you i get you uh yeah it, it's because um think how to say it. okay because most people understand that to get the flywheels to spin use a certain amount of of uh energy basically but then when you stick something between the wheels which is essentially what you're doing with the dart it's going to require a little bit more energy to actually like grab it and fling it that's how we call it flinging foam um and that's usually where I, from my experiences i've seen like lions kind of drop off but I, I will say in total transparency i would rather use a lion than stock batteries <laughs> i think oh, everybody's in that same absolutely. boat absolutely yeah, yeah. So if you're just if you're deciding between should i 
should I go lie on or should I stick with double A's? Please quit wasting your time and yeah. money with double A's. You you will get a better life, better usability, better 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 Be- everything. better really. enjoyment. <laughs> yeah, better enjoyment. Uh, even with and here's the thing is you don't have to get a super high-end lipo charger any b6 standard charger will charge uh, lipos they will charge lithium ions they will even charge nickel metal hydrides Mm -hmm. they have multiple charging stages on them and multiple voltages so they'll do 2s 3s 4s even 6s and that's just kind of the standard. If, if you look up B6 LiPo charger or B6, that's Bravo 6 mm-hmm. a charger that will, that there's, it's kind of just become a standard. And they are in the 25 to $40 range. Will serve you just fine. Let me see if I can find it. I have a really good, um, really good lipo charger that was recommended to me and i've been using it for a while i've, I've had nothing but fantastic success with it, Let me see if I can bring it up. anything that says b6 you can, on amazon or aliexpress or ebay or whatever mm-hmm. if it's a b6 battery charger it will be perfectly fine yep yep I, i'm just trying to find this one in case anybody's like curious like i don't know what to look for i mean it it's pretty simple. There we go. I think it's got three buttons on the front of it, or two. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's that one. Yeah, it's uh, got an LCD display. Yep, it's very simple nice. menu. You up and down one button, select with the other button. You have two cables, one to plug into the balance charge port, and mm-hmm. one to plug into the positive negative port, and it will charge a plethora. Of yeah. different batteries all the way different up to, voltages yep all the way up to 6s yep so i yeah. went ahead and dropped the link for you guys in case you guys want to at least see what we're talking about this is the solo good b6 uh neo this is the one i've been using it was recommended to me and uh, by by walcom of course and yeah it's, it works out pretty great for me but like last was saying anything that says b6 in it should be you should, should be good to go because b6 basically stands for balance charge 6 cell i believe um yeah sure we'll go with that i i i always assumed that's what it was because i've seen like the b6 the b3s well it comes from the rc guys oh okay okay that explains it okay the this was this came from the rc truck racing car racing guys that and they came up with this kind of open source somebody somewhere came up with it i'm mostly sure it's open source for the stuff that i've seen on it that it's open source and that's why you can get from all sorts of different labels on it because it's it's the equivalent of like open source yeah yeah because they all have the the plans the source code for the firmware the gerbers for all the pcbs and they just manufacture it and assemble it and you got a variety of manufacturers for it and that's why it's so cheap 30 to i mean you can, they have like 80 dollar models oh, yeah. and 100 dollar models that have a secondary power supply a thermal regulator port and a whole octopus it just really depends how much money you want to like dump into it <laughs> exactly yeah. like an octopus or what's the tin legged one squid squid arm tentacles worth of connectors for all sorts of different batteries that you might come across i tried there was a there's a very basic one my first one i'm trying to see if i can find it here we go this is this was my very very like early on like basic one that i had i had gotten and that was uh I was quite pleased with it. I actually I parted it off to somebody else, and but this one only goes up to uh, this one only goes up to B three. But it basically it'll tell you like whether it's cell one, cell two, cell three. You can see which each individual uh, charging area is uh, 
charged appropriately, which I, I, I liked. I mean, it's very idiot proof for lack of a better word, which when I first got into lipos was very um, useful for somebody like me. <laughs> well, I think even if you go with the the USB charger ones, as long as you're in. Oh, that, I forgot we have those now. Yeah. If you're in that 50 C range mm -hmm. uh, running a single stage uh, flywheeler without uh without a high crush to it you can run a high torque high rpm off of them you just don't want to run super high crush because that's where a lot of that torque and that current draw gets eaten up and i think that that on a 50c battery would be pretty adequate in single stage it, you know if you're going for that 130 to 150 super stock uh, a USB charger, a 2S or 3S USB charger running a single stage with a 40 to 42 crush would be perfectly fine. So what, what is your optimal crush? Because I've always liked running a 38.5. I think 38.5 is what I like to run. So that's that's max crush right there. Yeah, that's, that's why I want that max fling, <laughs> for lack of a better word. It's... Uh, yeah, that's... Oh, and Primate said, don't forget to get a lipo bag, yeah. I I will Whatever. say, if you're going to leave it unattended, which you shouldn't do, but when I say unattended, I mean like I put it to charge on my shelf while I have my back to it and I'm modding something, I consider that unattended. Uh, yeah, definitely get a lipo bag. Yeah, if you're going to put it on like a bookshelf or something. Yeah. You know, and... The, the most important thing is don't go poking holes in it. Oh my god, yeah. If you don't poke holes in it, you'll be hunky-dory fine with with a LiPo. And that's actually with any battery. You don't want to go be poking holes in it. Even mm -hmm. an alkaline battery, they get very nasty very quick when you bust them open. Yeah, if, if you guys do some research into alkalines, it can actually be pretty nasty. I'm surprised that we have them so uh, widely available in the mass market, but that's besides the point. Yeah, well, they don't actually explode like lipos do, though, because lipos get hyper reactive, whereas alkalines are just icky and can get you sick and yeah, loosen you. Whereas like a lipo, if you punch a hole in it, well, now you got a fire that now you got very... a spicy pill that's going to pop. <laughs> right. <laughs> but the other thing is that don't freak out about it. It, don't be that a just don't let that be a discouragement because i'll be honest with you and people are going to tell me i'm an idiot for this but i've actually rebuilt lipo packs it's not impossible yeah if you know what you're doing you can do it yeah and and if you just read up on how they work and pay attention and be careful take precautions and most importantly be meticulous about what you're doing and have a plan for when everything goes wrong and it's perfectly fine but uh people act like it's black magic it's not <laughs> yeah, they just like peaches were put in a can by a factory and <laughs> by a man in a factory downtown lipos are the same way yep somebody has to handle them all right yeah, I mean, they're I... built by a person they can be repaired <laughs> by a person it's not magic yeah all right, I think that's about an episode, man. We rambled on about lipos. <laughs> yeah, we, we were it, talking it was about good, blasters. good stuff, man. We started talking about midfield, rear field, front front line blasters, and devolved into lipos. All right. Well, I, I, uh, I had to ask because I, I've heard the argument that people are like, "Oh, front lines only the the, the area for for uh, for flywheelers is the only place that you're going to be like effective." Well, I mean, I, I can agree with that argument somewhat because you don't want to put a flywheel like rear field because they're going to accomplish nothing in a competitive setting no yeah and, well depending on the gameplay right yeah especially course, in a limited so in a limited in a limited ammo capacity game yes you do not want to put a full auto flywheeler on your rear line uh, unless you're super cqb then you're playing a different game right then and, and again it depends on some of the rule set and stuff but even then yeah typically not your your rear line is going to be your sniper 
your midfield are going to be your maybe faster rate of fire so that's where you're going to get the the rate of fire is going to go up and then your front line is going to be your guys like really pushing it and they really need you know select fire or at least uh very well acting semi-auto flywheelers just to keep the that sustained rate of fire going but thank you for joining us on our ramble we got a little this rambly evening. guys and we apologize but it, it's good you know we, we haven't uh, rambled in a while <laughs> well, and uh we hope that you'll join us for our ramble next week uh same dark time same dark channel peace out people.